God a believer. It's your glorious day. Say it's my glorious day. Hallelujah. Is somebody here with me? I was going through a scripture this morning. In fact, as a matter of fact, I have tried my best never to repeat myself in any program or in any church service. I've tried my best to always give a fresh word by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But it looks like my message that I've been using for single summit is a conk message. It's, it's a message that is on top. It, it's a message that, that breaks the very tail and the very back of the enemy. And I've been using it and I know that when I use it, it gets results. But this morning when I woke up and I was reflecting and I was thinking aloud, what do you have for your people? I just left without an answer until I got here. And the Lord said, I want my people to live a glorious life. And their glory will show up in their marital destiny. For the glory of God to be seen in your life, it must be shown when you are married. I said, when you are all married. Now the Lord, in his understanding, gave me some few scriptures I want to share with you. The first one happens to be Ephesians. In fact, I was trying to read the book of Ephesians uh, and the verse in chapter number five uh, with certain kind of understanding and certain kind of uh, um, and humility as the Lord was beginning to expose to me I mean, the, 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 the thin line between marriage as in the man and the woman and also Christ as in his church and his church there is a thin line between uh, a man and the woman in marriage and also Christ and his church as a matter of fact that the marriage symbolizes or represents Christ and his church is somebody here with me and the book of Ephesians chapter number 5 expressly uh, open us to such a mystery that even as Christ has the bride so every bride must has a groom the Bible says that it was recorded that the man shall not be alone. Genesis chapter number 1 verse number 20 says the man shall not be alone. The man shall not be alone. The man shall not be alone. In as much as it is not good for the man to be alone it is not good for the woman to be alone. The marriage relationship between the man and the woman is represented in Christ and the church, the book of Ephesians chapter number uh, 5 speaks to that effect the Bible says let's begin to read from verse number 20 giving thanks always to all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ submitting ourselves one to another in the fear of God wife submit yourself unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, say submission and the husband is the head of the wife as the as 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 even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body so there is an order there is an order uh, that that flows with the hierarchy of 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 of, of Christ uh, being the head of the man and then the man also being the head of the woman and each one is each other's covering and each one is each other's glory can i drop that in ah christ expressly said that his glory is of the father his glory is of the father so christ who comes after uh, God in the hierarchy see God to be his glory come on he see God to be what hallelujah so you're covering your glory you're covering your glory now the man uh, who also comes after Christ see must see Christ as his covering and his glory your glory is in your covering your glory is in your covering your glory is in your covering uh, in as much as there is a spiritual marriage uh, between uh, man and Christ 
Christ that the church and, and Jesus Christ uh, so there must be a physical marriage also between the man and the woman to represent what Jesus stands for so the woman also comes after the man and the man becomes his her covering and her glory so you see the other you see the other you see you see the other you see the other the man must submit unto Christ and the, and, 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 and the woman must submit unto the man is it agreed is it agreed is it agreed a man who fails to submit unto Christ must not receive or must not uh, subject the wife into submission that becomes an abuse that becomes an abuse that becomes an abuse and it doesn't make glory fulfilled is somebody here with me now let's go on to the details verse number 24 that is verse number 24 verse number 24 somebody push it further verse number 24 the bible makes it clear therefore as the church is subject unto christ so let the wives be uh, to their own husbands in everything say in everything is somebody here with me I, uh, pastor but you know we are not wives yet uh, but we are talking about wives here wait and see somebody has already entered into the realm i said somebody has already entered into the realm now the bible makes it clear verse number 26 uh, uh, okay let's go to verse number 25 husbands love your wife and here we see the husband to be Christ who love us as individuals can be man it can be woman Christ love us the husband love the church uh, Christ love us the wives now he went on to say this can I push this further open your spirit else you will miss this and even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that it might sanctify Come on, that is where the key word is. Verse number 26 and 27 is what I'm pushing harder. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Is somebody here with me? Verse 27. I'm pushing this and then I'm done. He said, So ought men to love their wives as their own husband but I, I i intentionally jumped let's go back to verse number 27 all these things are happening so that he might present to he must present to himself a glorious church which is without spot or wrinkle or such any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish so are you listen for every bride your mark is glorious for everyone seated here you are marked for a glorious enviable marital celebration there is a day god has set for you this year where he wants to present you unto himself as a glorious church when we are talking about the church we are talking about the called out ones the ecclesia those who have been gathered and we are talking about individuals we are not talking about a, a building but we are talking about you and you and you one of the things that is expressly made clear in scripture concerning marriage is that god has ordained every child to have a glorious presentation of your marital celebration your amen is real in Romans chapter 8 verse number 30 
Romans chapter 8, verse number 30. I'm pushing this so hard. I wish somebody can have an open revelation. He said that moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. I have come too far to be ashamed and to be rejected and to be depressed. I have come too far to fail. I have come too far. I have spent so much. I have struggled enough. I have been frustrated enough. I have been used as a dormant for a long time. It is my time to break forth. I have been called as a glorious church and I must present it as such. I, I am the bride of Christ. He has a seal over my life therefore I will not leave my life anyhow ah, in this year God is setting me for a sweet presentation I've been set up for a sweet presentation God is making all this new Jesus Christ who is my glory ah, is setting up for me a sweet presentation of my glorious destiny he said after I've been through all I was prepared Destinated. Uh, and when he called me, the Bible said he justified me. It doesn't matter the things I've been through. I have come too far to give up. Can I tell somebody you have come too far to give up? He justified me. And the Bible said that he glorified my life. Until you come to the place of your glorious destiny you will never take your place in your marital destiny is somebody here with me until you come to the place of your glorious destiny you will never come to the place of taking over your marriage is somebody here with me you should know that you have been ordained for glory God wants to present you unto himself now, for every glory of a woman is your head. The glory of every woman is your head. And the glory of every man is also your head, which is Christ. Is somebody here with me? And therefore, if God wants to present you as a glorious church, then, in as much as it is done physically, it is done spiritually, it must also show physically. You can't live without your hair. You can't live without your glory. You can't live without that which gives you a covering. When you are not married, you are too exposed. If you are a woman and you are not married, you are too exposed. If you're a man and you're not married, you are too exposed. You can be good spiritually. You can do all the things in the church. You can be so spiritual and uh, walk in all the statues of God. But once you have not come into that marital covenant, you don't come into the, in, in, into the glorious lineage. You don't come into the glorious lineage. Marriage must be glorious for every child of God. Oh, come on. I don't know who is understanding me. I'm trying to push this harder for you to get it. But until you come to that marital lineage, your glory is falling short. God wants to present you unto himself this year as a glorious church. Mina, as a glorious church. Receive! Now, one way that I'm living with you makes this happen is on the instrumentation of what we call favor. Ah. If I were you, I would shout it. No. Can I tell you something? Whatever has a name, when you call, it must respond. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. One way, or one way by way.
life. God gives us or presents us unto himself as a glorious church. It's by the instrumentation of evil. I'm talking about marital destiny here. You need to be deep to understand my message. It's favor. It's favor. When the Lord somewhere, somehow has rejected the people and has departed from them because of their ways of life. And when nothing seems to be working for them, the Bible said they began to cry unto God and call upon the name of the Lord. And the Bible says it's written in the Psalms in the Psalm 102 Psalm 102 Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody is blessed. The Bible makes it clear. I'm blessed with this word. I'm blessed with this word. Psalm 102, verse 30. Psalm 102 is a prayer. It was a prayer. It was a prayer. It was a prayer. It was a prayer. When God heard their prayer, He said, I will remarry you again. I will come back to you again. I will, I will, I will, I will come back to you. And I want to present you back unto myself. How? He said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon who? Upon who? Upon who? Don't say me, take it. For the time. For the time. For the time. What says your time? My favorite time, you are there. I said, What says your time? What says your time? Yay! The set time has come. Listen, if you are money here, don't be jealous. But for everywhere in scripture, apart from Joseph, all other favor talk about women. Only few women take, took it. Because I have come to understand that it is through favor that you are able to secure marital celebration. Yeah. Favor, favor, favor. I can give you countless examples. Apart from Joseph, who God favored in Potiphar's house and blessed Potiphar because of Joseph, the favor of God that was upon him. Everywhere in scripture that I have found favor talked about women. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse number 22. This is the last shot I'm giving it to you. This one we call it take home. This is what you are going to carry from here. Amen. Japon, no matter how you are carrying this home. I said you are carrying this home. If you don't get this and you go, all your prayers will be struggles. But favor will flavor your labor. But uh, how many of you were here the last break tonight? We had the oil of favor and the oil of what? Labor. The dear will keep on now. If they attracting the right person, is the oil of favor. Masa, Anessa, Ubechia. But from today, the oil of favor will come upon you. You are set down to be favored in love. And by reason of that, you are going to attract the right man. How does God cause us? Receive us 
as a church without blemish and without wrinkle, not by act or deed of works, but by favor. He loved us. This is a spiritual truth. Whichever way you get it, God is speaking to you. Now listen. He said, Whoso ever find a wife, whosoever find a wife. This scripture was not talking about the one who has already been married. Even as Christ was talking about the church, as the wife. It's not talking about those who are already in marriage. Whosoever find a wife has found a good thing. And not enough has obtained favor. So favor is synonymous to be the wife. Man, take and as synonymous in an amontias here. I'm a marafo. I'm a marafo. I'm a marafo. Tell somebody to suffer. Marafo. And then the images from Amen. Listen to me. He said that whoever finds a wife. It doesn't mean that when you find a wife, then you find good to add. Oh. You don't find good to add. It is not something you add on. When you find a wife, you don't add on favor. In fact, when I find Mina, it doesn't mean say, Mina, no, no, and a favor becoming. That is not it. There is no difference. In fact, favor and being a wife is inseparable. And no son say more to do that. Should I break it down? The person will say, "Favor now, we don't pay him." And ne a year, and so so yeah, day. And no swan yeso. Hamarika, Hamarika. Offer ne. No need me tell my kid. Jiake. Is somebody here with me? So, listen. As you locate favor today, you may not have a boyfriend. As you locate favor today, you may not have anybody in your life. As you locate favor today, Nothing seems like your marriage will be possible this year. But because favor has come upon you, it has changed your position and has changed your status. And therefore, you become what you are. Ah, take it. Take it! Take it! Take it! Is somebody understanding me? You become what you are. In the spirit. Somebody is blessed. I say, Somebody is blessed. To present unto himself a glorious church. A church.
shirt that is without a wrinkle or blemish or spot. Your marriage will be spotless. I said your marriage will be spotless. It will be wrinkled. Less. Listen. You can't become what you are not. You can't. You can't give what you don't have. Is somebody here with me? So he said that whosoever findeth the why. Listen. Men go out looking for wives. They don't go looking for women. That is the secret. All along you have been a woman because you lack favor. You have been a woman because you lack favor. But God is looking for a church to present unto himself without blameless or wrinkle. And it takes favor not by dint of hard work but just favor I see that favor coming on you I see that favor coming on you I see that favor coming on you we say obtain a favor of the Lord which means that God given favor the spirit of favor favor is a spirit it makes you it makes you favor is a spirit and it makes you favor is a spirit and it makes you it makes you as I said men go looking good men tell somebody good man go looking Women, no, uh, wives, not women. Why? I pray for you today. By favor, may you become a wife. So, why to be a wife? It's not to be gathering utensils. To be a wife, it's not necessary the exchange of diary and those things. It's not the engagement. To be a wife is on the altar of favor. That is why I know somebody will not miss your place today. Before you live here, you will walk out in the favor of the Lord. In the favor of the Lord. In the favor of the Lord. Receive. Shout favor three times. you are a child of God according to Psalm number 5 verse 12 Psalm number 5 12 as I bring the message to a close and pray for you before you go thank you Holy Spirit thank you Jesus he said that but thou Lord will bless the righteous and with favor will thou enter As you go out from here, may you be full of favor. And may favor encompass you. I declare from today that you are a child of favor. That is why your marriage can never be hindered. Is somebody here with me? Jesus is ready to present you unto himself a glorious church a church in marriage a wife in marriage a wife in marriage anyone who wants to stand against this way May the Lord arise in his fury and come against that in the name of Jesus. Now how do we obtain favor? Favor is
is in many facets. But favor, though you don't work for it, but you push yourself to favor. Listen, there's a difference. You don't pay for it, work for it. But you push yourself through favor. Anyone in scripture that obtained favor, it wasn't on the silver one. Favor comes when you have touched the heart of God. When you have touched the heart of God. When you have touched the heart of God. Number one, he talked about the righteous. So righteousness is a key. Righteousness is a key to a life of favor. Is somebody here with me? I must be righteous. Tell yourself I must be righteous. Is somebody here with me? Now, I want you to have this word. I must be righteous. He said, I will encompass him with favor as a shield. It means I will surround him with favor. I will surround him with favor. In the name of Jesus, may your life be surrounded. I said, may your life be surrounded. I said, may your life be surrounded. Now, this is very important. How do we obtain favor? How do we obtain favor? Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just want to give you one key, which is very, very important before you live here today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We talked about the righteous. Hallelujah. We talked about the righteous. Landa Karabo I'm looking for a particular word for you. I'm looking for a particular word for you. I'm looking for a particular word for you. Say a particular word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. He says that verse, Psalm 34, verse number 17. Psalm 34, verse number 17. Psalm 34, verse number 17. Psalm 34 verse number 70 say that the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their trouble. Is somebody here with me? So when the righteous is surrounded with favor then God hears your prayer. Is somebody here with me? So you must have a right standard with God. God wants you to present to himself a blameless church and a church that is without spot nor wrinkle. How then do we obtain favor? Number two, Luke 5, verse number 5. The Bible says that then Simon answering and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. When he had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their net began to break. That is favor at work. So the second thing that makes you obtain favor is obedience to the word of God. Obedience to the word of God. Now Mary told the people that whatsoever he tells you, do it. Whatsoever he tells you, come on, whatsoever he tells you, how then do you obtain favor? Fear God. Tell somebody fear God. Fear God. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, how do you obtain favor? Fear God. Go with me to Psalm 147, verse 11. Is somebody writing or you're looking at my face? Huh? Psalm 147, verse 11. The Lord take a pleasure in them that what? Oh my God. The Lord take a pleasure in them that fear. In those that hope is in his mercy. Is somebody here with me? 
So, you must fear God. Number five, or number seven, four. How do you obtain favor? You obtain favor when your ways pleases the Lord. When your ways pleases the Lord. That was the scripture I was trying to find out. Proverbs 16, verse 7. He said that when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. That is favor. Some of you from today, the people who are saying they won't allow you to marry, they will, they will rather give you up. <laughs> they are the ones that are going to lead you to go and marry. In the name of Jesus. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, he maketh even his enemies all. Somebody's blessed. Hallelujah. Is somebody here? Then number five, how do you obtain favor? You obtain favor also on the altar of your giving. Your giving. Your giving. Your giving. Your giving. Those, of, those going, who are they? Call them for me. Call those going for me. Call them. Tell them pastor wants to see them. It's by your heart. Giving is one of the things that touches the heart of God. I was telling somebody yesterday who came to present a seed unto me. He told me that, Pastor, the other day you were praying for me and you said, The Lord should help me complete a project. I don't know what I told him, but he was reminding me of what I told him when I was praying that he should finish the project he has started. So he came to me with a seed and said, Pastor, the project you talked about is a building I have started, but I'm stuck. There's no money to continue. But I have come with a seed of 10 bags of cement to support this children's service project you are doing here. And I said, wow, you have touched the heart of God. Because nobody can outgive God. That is weak. No matter how much you think you are a giver, you cannot out give God. You cannot give more than what God can give you. God is far more a better giver than you are. But God doesn't just give, but he gives to those that knows has his heart of giving. Those who are able to touch his heart. For love, God gave. And God has been giving. Your giving demonstrates your love for God. And your love for God is what touches his heart for favor. In life. There are times we pray. There are times we do all kinds of things. But we fail to give. Listen, whatever cannot take, I told the man yesterday that whatever cannot take care of your expenses. It's not your fruit. It is your seed. Uh, his project under no circumstance could 10 bags of cement be able to finish that project for him. But because he couldn't finish that project, it is a seed. And that seed is going to germinate and grow into a bountiful harvest. Whereby every expenses on the building till completion will be taken care of. Many of you eat your seed and you struggle in prayer to ask God for the harvest. Where did you sow? That's the question. Where did you sow? Forget about prayer. It has its way. The Bible says that and the prayers and the giving of Cornelius became a warrior. When it was being recorded, the giving was aspect was part of it. Not only his prayer. So if you are here, you are stingy. You don't even give to your men friends who come and visit you. You don't cook for them. But at least be generous, say. Be generous. Let me tell you, a generous heart, a generous heart.
Is somebody here? And so, grab on. And you know, and for favor, and you're Money be bring me your money. I sound so quiet, yeah. Already announced. 
your invitation should be circulated in the name of Jesus and before the end of the year may yours also register may we have a new crop of set a new set of people next year by this time because everybody would have been married in your year 2019 I declare it's your marital year of celebration receive by favor receive be on your feet come on be on your feet how many of you are ready for this this is just about five minutes then your heart must be engaged are you ready for the favor no you are not are you ready for the favor oh, what? then smile to the favor the scripture I quoted that brought me into all this Job chapter 8 you remember verse 7 good till he fills my mouth with laughing and I left with rejoicing as you are living here favor is going to cause you to laugh and you are going to rejoice for the rest of the year let me tell you never ever live in your life to think that you are late that is an aspect I couldn't touch but maybe next time we meet I will teach you on that some of you are living in denial but your delays are never your denial no 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 I said your delays are never you have negated your prayers because you feel that nothing has happened Sometimes you feel sad and that makes you feel that this cannot work. Let me tell you, even there is an example in Ghana for everybody to see. A 45 year old woman who ever could think that she would ever be married. Very popular person. Let me tell you, and her marriage was an enviable. So no matter your age, if you don't believe the kind of you, let me tell you, God will give you more than give the ante. That is the kind of God we say. If I knew God would not do it, I wouldn't call for this meeting. I'm telling you, I would not call for it. I would not. But everything that has taken place in this altar. It's an indication that you and you and you and you and you uh, this year you will laugh uh, I said you will laugh uh, may favor cause everyone to laugh here yeah. Wow. Raise your hands to the Father. It's coming on you. Just pray that Father.